I'm going to share the presentation with you now and let's get started. Oh, I can see somebody is joining us. Welcome, Stoyan. All right, so everybody, can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm going to enlarge it and we can officially start. So let's see what's on the agenda for today. We're going to define effective and productive communication at the workplace and otherwise, because the definition is basically the same. We're going to try to acquire the necessary tools to communicate in this way. We're going to have several simulations and practice. I hope everybody's going to stay long enough so that everybody can try and use the knowledge that we're going to acquire. And finally, we're going to have a Q&A session, we're going to have a discussion, and hopefully you will have some questions because that will mean that you listened actively and that you got something out of this and of course that you are thinking about it. At any moment, if you realize that I'm speaking too fast or that I am not expressing myself clearly or if there is anything wrong with our communication or the sound, please let me know in the chat box or by turning on your microphone and I will be happy to, of course, do everything that I can to fix the problems. So let's see, who would like to tell me what kind of communication is effective? Of course, if no, nobody wants, I will tell you, but if you know, if you would like to share, what do you consider effective communication, everybody? Okay, well, a simple definition, not out of some dictionary or out of some book, is that effective communication is the kind of communication where there are no misunderstandings, there is no frustration, and there is no conflict. Would you agree with this? Uh, yes, sure. Okay, so there is probably something that you would like to add. Is there anything that you would like to add to this? Is there anything else that makes effective communication? Um, I would say that the communication should be uh, direct also and um, I think everything should be in in expressed in a clear way without actually um, in a polite manner so that we uh, get what we want without offending another person as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your expertise. Marina is also an NLP master practitioner, so communication is a strong suit for her as well. Um, direct communication is extremely important when it comes to communication efficiency. And of course, politeness and positive expressions are a big factor in effectiveness. Also, I would like to add that this kind of communication is the kind in which we listen more than we speak. Now, why is listening so important? Why is that often problematic for many people? And do you think that you are a good listener? Does anybody have anything to share? Let's start with why is it so important to listen, to listen carefully more than we actually speak? Why am I asking so many questions? <laughs> okay, so basically it is really important to listen to the person that we are communicating with more than we actually speak because by listening, we get to understand the person better. We get to understand where this person is coming from. We get to understand what's worrying her or him why, what he or she is dealing with, uh, what his or her problem is, and how we can maybe help in that situation if we are there to help. That's often the case at the workplace where, for example, the boss is giving us a specific assignment. If we're not listening carefully or if we're not focused on the the, the things that the person is saying, we are likely to go through some misunderstandings. If we interrupt the person who is speaking, thinking, I will say another word, assuming that we completely understood what this person wanted to say before this person had the chance to express him or herself, again, we are risking misunderstandings and we are risking frustration on the other side. 
when we listen carefully, we have the full picture and we can actually communicate much better when we have all the information that we need. But listening doesn't only mean keeping quiet and taking in the information without thinking about it. Active listening is thinking about the information that we are receiving, often analytically. We analyze it as well and we maybe think about the responses that we would like to provide and the questions that we might have after, of course, the person is done expressing him or herself. Interruptions. When are they appropriate and when are they not? Well, usually they are not, <laughs> but sometimes they are. For example, I will now tell you that if you ever feel the need to interrupt me during this webinar, you are allowed to and welcome to, because this way I am allowing you to ask your questions or add your comments right away at the moment when you thought about them. However, on some other presentation sessions or let's say in some classes, I would say, please hold your questions until the end. Sometimes the speaker or, you know, the communicator would not like to be interrupted. It is on us to evaluate the situation. When is it and when it is not polite to interrupt. But again, I will repeat, it is not polite in most situations. All right, so let's move on to productive communication. Now, why am I using the word productive and what kind of communication is productive? Well, effective communication is productive communication. What does this really mean? Well, if it's productive, it leads to a certain product. It leads to a certain result. And communication that is effective. So the com kind of communication that does not cause misunderstandings, it does not cause frustration, it does not cause conflicts, it is direct, it is polite, and it is positive. This kind of communication will be productive because it helps us achieve goals at the workplace. So our goal is to make our communication such. How can we do this? Now, this is the part where I would like you to get included if you'd like, if you don't want, it's okay. But if you want to participate using your microphone, your voices, your opinions, feel free to do so. So let's start with the first factor. Listen carefully. This is something that we already mentioned. When it comes to listening carefully, it is important to practice active listening. Now, this is something that we said. You need to think about uh, what the person is saying. We want to try to understand what the person is talking about and what the person is saying to us and what this all means. We want to, for example, if we're talking with a client or a customer, we should try to understand all the details of his or her inquiry before we jump to conclusions and offer a solution that might not even be a solution to the problem this person is having. Um, when it comes to talking with people who do not listen to us, it makes us frustrated, right? It makes us dissatisfied with the communication. It makes us feel bad, like we are unappreciated. We don't want to do that to other people. We can't really affect how other people behave much, but we, what we can do is affect ourselves. We can change our own behavior and we can influence the way that we are communicating in. Now, how can we show the person that we are talking to that we are listening? Well, there are several ways and I will tell you, but first I would like you to tell me if you have any ideas. Anybody? How can we show somebody that we are listening carefully? Maybe we can use our body language. Sure. What kind of body language? Well, we can nod our head. Um, mm -hmm. We can look at a person's eyes. Absolutely. Very good, Yelena. Thank you. And I can see Marina also wrote nodding. Yes, very nice. Any other ideas? Is there some language that we can use? Is there something that we can say or do other than using our body language and nonverbal communication? 
Well, we can probably say, oh, I understand or something like that. I understand. Very nice. Is there anything else? Okay, I guess not. Well, thank you for participating. I really appreciate your participation. We can do all of those things that you mentioned, and they are so valuable. Yes, there are other things that we can do as well. We can rephrase what the person has said in order to clarify or maybe confirm that we understood the person correctly. You do know what it means to rephrase? Yes, maybe we can ask a question. Rephrase mm -hmm. a positive sentence into the question. Sure, that is also one of the ways. In another way, we could say, for example, let me see if I understood you correctly. What you are saying is, and then you say the same thing in different words. And if you understood the person correctly, the person will probably say, yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Or if there was a misunderstanding, the person will correct you. This is very important in order to avoid misunderstandings as well. Of course, Maria, you mentioned we should ask questions and not only in the rephrasing way, but we can ask questions about anything that might seem a little bit unclear for us. This is also how we show active listening and this is how we make sure that we understand each other perfectly well. Now, I am open, I am keeping my window open, but there is some noise. Um, is there any noise on your side? I mean, can you hear the noise? Should I close it? If it becomes too noisy, please let me know and I am going to make changes. The next factor is to know our audience. Now, we are not all public speakers, of course, but uh, when I say audience, I mean know who you're speaking to. Adjust your speaking style and not just speaking, I mean your communication style and method according to the person that you are talking to or the people you are talking to. For example, you're going to have a different approach when you're speaking with your boss, when you're speaking with your client or your potential client. Of course, you're going to have a different approach when you are speaking with your friend. When you speak, with different people, you are going to use different tone of voice. You're going to adjust your language. Of course, when you're speaking with your boss, your language is probably going to be more formal than when you're speaking with your friend. Then, for example, when you're speaking with your um, friend, your tone of voice is probably going to be a little bit higher, maybe a little bit more energetic or maybe kinder depending on the situation but when speaking with clients customers your boss and so on your tone of voice needs to be pleasant polite i suppose you hear that my voice has no frustration in it i am not showing any anger i am not showing any negative emotion in my voice and you can, you can feel relaxed, but also you can feel that it is a kind of a professional atmosphere. This is the kind of an effect that you want to achieve in your communication at the workplace as well. When it comes to um, methods of communication, this also depends on who you're talking to. Sometimes you're going to choose to call the person via phone. Sometimes you're going to, um, I don't know, send a message over Viber or a text message. Sometimes it's going to be more appropriate to write an email. And sometimes it's going to be just going to the person's office and communicating with this person face to face. So know your audience and then know what kind of communication is going to be appropriate for this person. Now, this is something that Ma Marina said, be concise, be direct, yes, be complete, and I'm adding be correct. These are very important factors when we want to eff effectively communicate. Now, when we are not communicating or when we are not expressing ourselves clearly, when we are, as we would say, beating around the bush, when we are giving information that is not exact, 
it, or when we are expressing ourself, ourselves vaguely, it can be very difficult for the other person to follow, to understand us well, and of course to stay engaged in the communication. Let's say that you have a sales call. Maybe you are not in sales, but let's use this example. And you are trying to sell some products. It's going to be more effective. I mean, your sales call is going to be more effective if you manage to get all the information into, let's say, a 10 minute presentation than in a 30 minute presentation. If you manage to say everything you need to say in a concise manner, without wasting your words, without repeating yourself, without saying many, many, many words, but saying too little, then you're going to reach your goal. Then you're going to achieve your purpose. And this is not very easy to accomplish, but there is one thing that you can practice. I mean, there are many things that you can practice, but I'm going to give you one exercise, and that is an elevator pitch to help you stay concise. Who knows what an elevator pitch is? Anybody? Nobody, really. Okay, so an elevator pitch is a kind of, um, let's say, marketing strategy. Sorry for the noise, I have construction works. When it comes to an elevator pitch, it's supposed to last a very short time. Uh, usually, the, the longest time would be the, the time that the elevator needs to get from the bottom floor to the top floor. Now, that can be something between 30 seconds and one minute, depending on the size of the building, right? But they say you should make sure to send your message in less than one minute. Now, what are you supposed to do in an elevator pitch? Well, usually that is a kind of an introduction that you want to make when you are trying to get a new job. And then in that one minute, or let's say 30 seconds, you're supposed to convince the person that you are the best for that job position. That's just one situation. Another elevator pitch example would be, for example, you have to talk with your boss. And you know that your boss is nervous, your boss doesn't have time to waste, you know that he or she will not listen to you if you have a long, let's say, presentation about what you need or what you want or... You get the point. Try to put everything that you need to say concisely, clearly, in less than one minute. Practice that in front of a mirror, record yourself, and then evaluate yourself. And you will see after some time of practicing, you're going to be more concise, more complete, and more correct. But be very analytical towards yourself. Don't let yourself love yourself too much, <laughs> but consider yourself as somebody you are assessing and then be as objective as you can be. Are there any questions in this part before we move on? Or maybe something, somebody has something to add. Okay. Is it noisy on my side? Should I close the window? Okay, I guess not. Let's move on to the next one. Incorporate feedback. What is feedback and why is it so important? When it comes to feedback, I always give it to my students. I always say what they did very well in their tasks and what they need to work on more, what they would need to improve in order to, you know, progress and to make progress in their classes. When it comes to the people that, that I collaborate with, every month we have a meeting and at that meeting I give them feedback on how we did that month, what we need to improve as a team, what we will need to keep on working on more, and so on. I suppose you noticed that I used positive expressions throughout everything that I said. Sometimes somebody doesn't do such a good job when it comes to students or some people that I work with. However, saying you did a bad job is not going to be helpful. 
So we need to not pack it or lie, but we want to express that in a positive and motivating and encouraging way, always. When it comes to the next factor, it basically chains to the previous one. We want to show respect. Communication is not going to be effective or productive or positive if we do not show respect to the person that we're talking to. This is maybe one of the most important criteria when it comes to having effective communication. Now, if we're meeting a prospect or a client or a student or a colleague for the first time, we can show our respect by addressing this person using his or her name, remembering this person's name. This can be a hard thing to do, but it is really, really important. How else could we show our respect? I would like somebody to say it while I close the window and reduce the noise. Anybody? How else can we show respect? In communication, in conversation with people who we met for the first time. Is body language an important factor here? Shaking the person's hand if we're meeting the person for the first time. Of course, during this pandemic, it's not really advisable to shake everybody's hand, but in normal conditions, this would be a normal thing to do. What else can we do? Let's forget about meeting the person for the first time. Let's think about generally communicating with people uh, at the workplace. So let's say that your boss sent you an email. How do you show respect? It doesn't have to be a boss. It can be a client or a customer or a colleague or a student. Well, you show respect by answering the email in due time. Marina says by replying, thanking them exactly. Reply in some kind of a normal time span. What is a normal time span? What, what is respectable? Is it all right to keep them waiting for a week or two? Of course not. My general policy is responding within 24 hours. Of course, I always try to respond in a, let's say, smaller or shorter period of time, but 24 hours should be the longest amount of time that somebody should be waiting for your answer. Everything longer than that is considered disrespectful. Of course, if you are at work in the office and your boss from the other office sends you an email that requires your immediate attention, well, in that case, Respond ASAP. I'm using this abbreviation on purpose. Does anybody know what it means? ASAP? As soon as possible. Thank you. Exactly. So when you are at the workplace and your boss or somebody who requires immediate attention sends you an email, respond as soon as you can, as soon as possible. Of course, that doesn't mean that if you are in the middle of a meeting, you should drop everything and just run and respond to an email, but that's why we say as soon as possible. Finally, nonverbal communication. Everybody, what is included in nonverbal communication? Body language. Body language, thank you. Yes. Facial expressions. Absolutely. Let me give you one example. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marina. That was exactly what I wanted to give an example for. Tone of voice as well. Definitely. The tone of voice is how we speak, right? The, the, the intonation that we use. I can say one thing in two or many different ways. For example, I can say, hello, everybody. It is so nice to see you today. And you can feel that I have some sarcasm in my voice and you don't feel very comfortable. But if I say, hello, everybody, it's good to see you today. Welcome. My tone of voice is creating a, di a certain kind of a mood in the room in which we are in the room which we are in 
I used in two times. Forgive me for that. Now, when it comes to tone of voice, it is a very important part of communication. There is more, of course, as uh, Maria said, face, uh, body language or facial expression. Yelena also said something about body language or facial expression. Yes, facial expression belongs to body language there are hand gestures as well and so on there is a kind of a way of expressing ourselves that shows a positive mood and a positive kind of behavior and a positive emotion and there are body language kinds and nonverbal communication styles that show negative communication Unfortunately, we only have around an hour, so I'm not going to be able to teach you much about body language and other kinds of nonverbal communication, but we can organize a different webinar for that as well. We are going to move on and we're going to talk about language. Although language does not make all communication, actually it makes the least, let's say, <laughs> when it comes to communication, because the most is made up by nonverbal communication, and we just talked about that. Still, the words that we use and the expressions that we utilize are very important, and they can create a strong effect and have a great impact on our relationships at the workplace, at home, in the bus, at the post office, basically everywhere. But in the combination with everything else that we've mentioned, if you master all those skills, you're going to be able to communicate effectively. If you'd like to read a little bit about how ineffective communication can affect you and others at the workplace, feel free to visit this website. I took this quote from there and it provides a good reading material. So if you like it, take a screenshot, visit it later. I can also send it in the chat box for you to copy and you can do some additional reading. They say that poor communication really can affect the costs. It can be quite expensive to communicate ineffectively. It can have a negative impact on leadership and people have shown to be less productive when they don't communicate properly or when they are not communicated with effectively. When, for example, we don't communicate with people in a good way, in a positive way, we can affect them in a way that they perform more poorly. This is really important to know if we, for example, work with people who are influenced by us, whose work is influenced by us. This is extremely important for teachers. We can affect our students' progress greatly if we know or if we don't know how to communicate properly. The same goes for child education of any kind babysitters, psychologists, pedagogists, um, in, in the HR industry as well. When we work with people, we need to be able to communicate with them in a way that is going to encourage them to do the positive things, right? The, the things that they are supposed to do. So let's move on from here and take a look. This is going to be a quick look but if you want to go through the whole article and go through this material more thoroughly, I am sending you the link. Oh, it's not working. But you can copy the whole thing that I pasted and you can take a look at it later. So there are several problems at the workplace. One is providing incomplete answers. When we don't provide complete answers, we are risking and greatly risking misunderstandings. Basically, we can waste our time, we can lead to our own frustration and the frustration of the other person because by not communicating clearly and by not giving complete answers, mistakes are bound to happen. So take time to answer questions. Answer them completely and do not assume that somebody 
understood you completely just because you think it is something that should be understood by everybody. Nothing is a given and we need to make sure to express ourselves as effectively as possible. When it comes to, for example, emails, sending an angry email before <laughs> editing it and making it more positive and less attacking, less direct is a huge mistake. Also, for example, if we answer a question or if we respond to somebody's communication while we are angry or frustrated or very busy and, you know, we are under a lot of stress, we sometimes forget to use the filter. What do I mean by that? We all need a kind of a filter. For example, instead of saying you never provide those documents on time or I am sick of you being late every time or so on. We, we should really be careful with that kind of communication. It is not helping anybody. We should edit. We should change it. We should use that filter and make it less harmful. Later, we're going to do the practice and we're going to focus on doing just that. Choosing the wrong format, for example, sending an SMS when you are supposed to call or um, calling somebody when you know that this person cannot answer a phone call, he or she is at the meetings for the entire day. In that case, send an email and wait for the response and so on. Choosing the wrong format can be a big problem in communication, but that brings us back to knowing your audience because when you know your audience, you know which method of communication is suitable and then you know what to do, which method to use. We already said what making assumptions can do to us. Don't assume that somebody is going to do something just because you think this person should or that this is something that everybody should know that it should be done. For example, you hired a cleaning lady and you suppose that this person is going to clean everything very thoroughly as you expected, but you did not clearly state what exactly it is that you expect. Of course, you made an assumption and you're probably going to be dissatisfied unless this person is very proactive. The same goes for your colleagues. If you think that, for example, it is a given, it is something normal that your colleague would come and help you if he or she sees that you are swamped and you are frustrated because your colleague did not come and help, well, you're just assuming, why is that a normal thing? This brings us back to what Marina said at the beginning, communication needs to be direct. Do you need something? Express it. Of course, in a polite way, but say it. Do not assume that somebody is going to know what to do just because you think or you believe that it should be done. We don't all think in the same way. So we all have to be aware of that and then adjust our communication. We spoke about what too little information can do to us and not answering fully. Well, the same can go for giving too much information. Trying to say everything in one utterance or trying to give all the necessary information to somebody can really confuse a person. So the way to fix this problem is to make sure to prioritize, get to the point, think about the three or four most important, let's say facts or things that you need to say to this person. And then think about whether those three or four things are really the most important things. Everybody here went to school, so I can give you a school related example. When we read some texts and we were supposed to summarize them, what did we have to do? We needed to determine what the main idea was, right? And then we had to think about three to five most important details that would support this main idea. Well, the saying goes here. Don't try to say everything. Simply say the most important things, at least at the beginning. Later, you can add more information, but try to avoid confusion. Improvising. If, for example, somebody asks you a question, you have no idea what the answer is, don't try to improvise and pretend like you know. 
that's going to lead to ineffective communication. You can say that you don't possess that information right now. However, you would be more than happy to check and get back to the person asking. There is no shame in not knowing everything. We are human. We don't know everything in this world, and that is natural. Nobody can expect of us to be robots or computers or some divine creatures. So don't improvise, don't lie if you don't know something or you don't possess a skill to do something. Say, I will be happy to learn it in the due time, or I will do my best to acquire that knowledge or information before the necessary deadline or before the deadline and so on. So positively say the truth. Instead of saying, I don't know, say, I will do my best to learn it. Instead of saying, I have never done that, say, I am happy to try it for the first time and I will do my best to complete this task successfully. We're going to pay more attention to the positive expressions later. For now, are there any questions? I suppose not. Am I maybe speaking too fast? I suppose not. All right. <laughs> so I will continue on the next part, spreading gossip. There is nothing to talk about here. Simply don't do it. Gossiping is never positive. We're going to move on and do some practices. I know that not all of you can stay for the full hour, so I really am trying to be as effective as possible so that everybody can get a chance to practice a little bit. So if you would like, I would really like you to, to get included and speak. And Yelena, I would like you to speak in this part. So are you interested in that? Yeah, of course. Okay, so the situation is the following. There is a person and this person is not communicating effectively with you in the matter that he or she is not listening to you. He or she keeps interrupting you. He or she keeps assuming some things that you did not express. And that leads to misunderstanding. It leads to frustration. Both of you are not acquire, achieving the desired result. What can you do? Mm, well, first of all, it is important for me to notice that the person is not able to understand something and that is obvious because I'm constantly being interrupted. Um, I guess I would try to slow down a little bit and um, try to summarize everything that I said and then perhaps ask the other person if he or she understood everything correctly. Maybe I would need them to summarize everything for me just to check if they understood everything well. Mm -hmm. So they are interrupting you constantly. Instead of trying to assert yourself and trying to speak more, you would ask questions to get this person to speak more and show you that he or she understands. Right. Very effective. Nice. Thank you so much. Uh, I have another question also for you, Yelena. Let's say that this person is starting to be a little bit passive aggressive or maybe really aggressive. And this person interrupts you so much that she is becoming a little bit rude. Do you have mm -hmm. any tips? Mm, well, not quite sure, but I would really try to remain calm. That's that great. is the most important thing. Um, because I believe if I get angry too, or aggressive, then the communication part will not work at all. Um, I'm not quite sure though. I've never been in such a situation before. I am very happy for you. Um, thank you for expressing yourself and I'm going to provide a few details that might be helpful. First of all, you are absolutely right when it comes to um, not getting aggressive as well because this is something that you might have read in the introduction to this webinar. People tend to mirror other people. They tend to behave in a similar way as the person that they are talking to. They try to be like a reflection, maybe not conscious, consciously. This is a relatively subconscious thing that happens. So what you can do as somebody who is aware 
of the communication styles. And somebody who is aware of what's going on, you can give the communication model that you consider suitable for this situation. And what is that? Well, the person is behaving aggressively. Take a deep breath first, because this can be very frustrating for you. It can, not only for you, Yelena, now I'm speaking to everybody. This can be really frustrating. It can, it can cause you to get out of balance a little bit. Maybe it can cause you to get a little emotional. It is not pleasant to be attacked by someone. So take a deep breath. Then think about this person for a moment. Maybe it's she or he had a bad day. Maybe he or she doesn't know how to communicate properly. Maybe he or she is feeling sick, has some kind of a, let's say, health condition. Or maybe this person is simply rude. We cannot change a rude person. But what we can do is assert the communication method that we want to be used. For example, this person is starting to yell at you. Now, excuse me if this is going to cause negative emotions, but I will provide an example. No, no, you are not right. I am right. And I think this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to, uh, this is the right way to go. Let's say that this is happening at the workplace. I don't know how to be rude, but I did my best. You can say, I appreciate your input. I understand that you think that this is the best way to go. However, I know that you will agree with me when I say that a more positive communication style can provide better results for us. Let's try to, let's say, adjust our tone. Now, this might come a little bit as a surprise to the person and he or she might get even more aggressive. Hopefully that will not happen. If it does, and if this person starts yelling at you, it's time to remove yourself from this conversation. If you cannot, if this is your boss or uh, an important client, you can simply keep your way of communicating and keep asserting yourself as somebody who is positive and polite until the end. Maybe some of you saw my example uh, from the bank. Yesterday, I went to the bank and the person started yelling at me, although I did nothing wrong. And she said, uh, you know, it would be much more convenient for you if you went to a, uh, to a post office or uh, an exchange office. And I said, yes, sure. Thank you for your input. I am aware of that. However, it was easier for me to come to your establishment and pay this bill here. You know, it would be cheaper as well. We charge quite a hefty uh, fee. And I said, yes, okay, I am aware of that as well. And I don't mind paying a little bit more for the convenience that I'm getting because this is much closer than the exchange office. I said that all with a smile, all while she was very aggressive and she did not change her communication way. But you know what? What changed for me is that I did not get frustrated. I kept my emotional stability while I was being kind and, let's say, um, peaceful, while I was communicating nicely. I did all I could. And it was her choice to be rude. At the tax officers, I had a similar situation when the per where the person did not seem interested in talking to me. And she was let's say in the mood of saying, what do you need? Tell me, what do you need? And again, I provided all the information with a smile, with a positive tone of voice, giving concise and clear and exact information. And I was so nice that she started smiling by the end of our conversation. Of course, when it comes to people who keep saying bad things to us or keep interrupting us, we can say something as well to stop this kind of behavior. And we could say, I am sure that you agree that we can be more effective if we focus on the questions that I'm asking, for example. Or let's say that this is a real situation from one English class. Uh, a student is refusing to speak in English, but he or she is learning the English language. So we can say, for example, instead of saying, 
Why are you constantly speaking in Serbian? Just an example. We could say, I know that you know that you will progress better and more effectively if you communicate in English. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake. Mistakes are a natural way to, the, to, to progress. So let's, let's speak in English. Let's try to find ways around the words that we don't know. And this is going to lead us to a better progress. Anyway, there are many more situations like these and many more ways to deal with them. But let's move on to the next one. Um, who would like to do this one? Your boss asks you to work late. And you already have plans. You don't want to create a negative atmosphere, but you also want to keep your boundaries and you do not want to work late. What can you do? Anybody? I will choose somebody. Natasha. If you want to participate, of course. Yes, of course. Okay, so let me, um, let me know what would you like to do. <laughs> okay, I'm really bad in <laughs> keeping my boundaries, actually. Okay, so that, but, it's good that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I could try to say, like, um, okay, um, I would be happy to help you, uh, for example, tomorrow to solve your problem, but at the moment it's something urgent for me, so I can't really help you at this moment, but I would be happy to do that next time or tomorrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nicely said. However, avoid problems. Uh, avoid mentioning negative words such as problems. Mm -hmm. Everything else was quite nice. Also, if there wasn't anything urgent, just don't lie. You, you don't you don't have to do that. You can simply say I am otherwise engaged or I have something mm -hmm. else planned that I cannot or I am not able to cancel at this moment or um, currently I am unable to uh, unschedule or cancel my plans. I would be happy to help you the other time and so on. Generally, you expressed yourself very well. Is there anybody else who would like to share on this? Nobody, really. Okay, let's see the next example. Your boss, your client, your colleague, somebody you work with or for, calls you on your day off. You want this to stop. You don't want to answer your phone on your day off. You want to spend time with your family. How do you communicate this effectively? Anybody? Nobody. Okay, let me choose Marina. Marina, would you like to participate? Uh, sure. Well, I wouldn't answer the phone, first of all. It's that, that's my day off, but I would uh, text someone. I mean, it depends on the way of communication and the level of formality or send an email just to say, um, I'm really sorry, but uh, my working days are from Monday to, let's say, Friday, and I would be happy to help you um, on Monday, um, unless it is something urgent. So I would be free between this and that time just to answer your questions quickly, or I would be um, more than welcome to answer. I only have 10 minutes, maybe. But if that's something urgent, if not, uh, I would just write, please, um, could you please contact me on Monday? Mm -hmm. Nicely said. Uh, I have one thing to add and one question to ask. Uh, first, avoid saying, I'm really sorry. It's like you, you are to blame for something. Instead of that, what can you say in a more positive way? Hmm, I'm not quite sure. I can thank just you say, for understanding, thank maybe. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> or, sure. I appreciate you understanding and, and things like that. So turn mm -hmm. it to the positive. For example, um, you could say, as you said, um, today is my day off and I am not available to take your call. Thank you for understanding uh, that my work hours are from this to this time on those and those uh, on, on those and those days. Um, if there is something urgent, as you said, you can contact me at this time 
for the period of that, like, let's say 10 minutes if, if you said that. But I have a question. How do they or how do you determine what is urgent and what is not? Well, I guess they would answer the question and answer the message to say, um, well, I don't actually know. Well, because let's say that your boss is somebody who really wants you to answer the phone call and he or she does not respect your boundaries and does not care that you're spending your Sunday with your family. So everything is urgent for him or her. Yeah, in that case, I would just say that um, I would be more than hel welcome to help, but on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. On my first day on the trip. Yes, very nice. Um, when it comes to me, I have a nice example on Instagram or Facebook. If you would like to see it, you can write to me on, on a Sunday. Um, it says that there is an instant, an automatic message that the, the application actually sends. I wrote it a while ago and it says like something like this. Um, Thank you for contacting me. As Sunday is our day off, um, I will not be able to reply to your message immediately. However, if you have a specific question that you would like an answer to, please feel free to express it and I will answer it the earliest time on our first working day. Thank you for your understanding, kind regards and my signature. You can also set up messages like these if you don't want to always have to waste your time and write to these people who contact you on your days off and you can just relieve yourself of this extra obligation. Yelena, I know that you have to leave uh, a little bit earlier so that you can make it for your next commitment and your appointment. Uh, thank you so much for being here and I will send you the video for the rest of the meeting. Do you have any questions before you leave us? No, thank you very much. Thank you for being here and for participating. It was a pleasure. You can stay, of course, as long as you want, but I just wanted to say goodbye before we actually move on to the next part and get caught up in the conversation. So everybody, let's see who would like to do this one. Your colleague or your superior, somebody above you, or your sub ordinate, somebody below you, is venting. Oh, I wrote your frustration. You see, I'm making mistakes. Uh, this person is venting his or her frustrations on you. He's not or she's not being respectful. What do you do? Hmm. Let's say that he or she is yelling at you or he or she is blaming you for something. Whether you did it or not, it doesn't matter, but he or she is saying, you did this, you never do the job right, or something like that. What do you do in this situation? It's not only what you would say, but what you would do. Mm, Stoyan, would you like to answer? Okay, I guess not. Uh huh. you are slowly preparing for the course. Oh, okay, you would not like to discuss. Never mind, it's okay, no worries. Um, when it comes to Maria, I suppose you could answer this one. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Well, the most important thing to do or not to do is to show that that person is affecting you. So body language is, it should be... Um, I don't know how to say it, um, not aggressive and the tone of your voice should also be the same and you should try to calm that person. Mm -hmm. like how say, do we, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Like say, uh, I understand your frustration, but please let me finish what I started saying or something like that. Mm -hmm. that, could, that, that is something directly said, I like it. However, to somebody who is already very frustrated and aggressive, saying, I understand your frustration mm -hmm. might be a little bit strong. Maybe you could replace that by saying, I understand where you're coming from. Or I see what you mean, or I understand your feelings. 
avoid using frustration, anger, aggressiveness, and so on. Um, in that case, it's going to have a pos more positive impact. What you said about body language and the tone of voice, I completely agree. Keep calm, keep it positive, keep a smile on your face as much as that is possible. But if you're going to, if you feel like this person is going to make you cry and you're just trying to keep a smile on your face while you know you're tearing up, don't do it. Just forget about the smile and keep a relaxed face. That's going to be much easier for you. I am the kind of a person who really doesn't like being yelled at. And for me, that makes me feel like I start shaking a little bit. And it's not a good feeling, but I try to keep my voice calm and I try to do exactly what you said. I understand where you're coming from. However, let's try to do this in a calmer way. Or maybe we should do this at another time when you are feeling up to it or something like that. Or simply saying, mm, maybe it would be, be best if we, we could have a break or if we could have a cup of coffee before we continue this conversation. And things like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be, um, let's say, counter-attacking the person but it can be something that positively uh, lets the person know that this is not the way to communicate. Tell me that you're annoyed without telling me that you're annoyed with my <laughs> way of communication, basically. This was good, excellent. Moving on, we have some useful expressions that we're going to quickly cover. For example, instead of saying, I'm sorry that I did not do this task according to your expectation, you can say thank you for understanding or thank you in advance for understanding if you are planning not to be perfect <laughs> which is not always the plan thank you for understanding um, let's say me being new at this position and doing my best to accomplish my task successfully or for example Instead of saying, please don't talk to me in that way, or please don't interrupt me, we could say, thank you in advance for listening carefully until the end of my expression before you share your feedback. Instead of saying, I hope you won't be late, let's say for our meeting, what can we say by using thank you in advance or thank you for? Anybody? Thank you in advance for showing up on time. Sure, if it's a relatively neutral or informal, um, let's say, environment, instead of showing for, up for keeping up um, the range time. I know I'm missing some word. <laughs> but okay, you understand the point. Adjust your speaking away your, your speaking style to the person you are talking to for coming for arriving on time and so on yes nice i look forward to instead of i expect or using imperatives like i look forward to receiving those documents in due time instead of i expect to receive those documents in one hour I look forward to, hmm, let's see, instead of saying, I expect you to learn how to use Microsoft Office before you start working here. How can you use, I look forward to? Be creative, you don't have to repeat my expression. I look forward to seeing an improvement in your skills when it comes to Microsoft Office. Just an example. Another very useful, uh, let's say, technique is using cause and effect relationships. One of them is if and then. If you do this, then this will happen. Now, I did not use anything that you should say this instead of because well, simply you can use it in a lot of different kinds of situations. Let me give you an example. If you speak only in English in our classes, then you will see a quick improvement in your speaking and comprehension skills. I will give you another one. If you 
work on improving your communication skills at the workplace, then I am certain that your work relationships are going to be more positive and stronger. By the way, this was a mistake. I should first use the shorter adjective and then the longer one. So stronger and more positive. Still, let's see if you have some examples that you would like to share for using if and then. Anybody? Okay, so for homework, think about this. Think about how you could use if and then and these other ones at the workplace. Okay, this is just, let's say, one of the final things that we're going to go through before the Q&A session. You should try always to say something positive instead of saying something that is not so positive. So when there is something less than positive that you're thinking about or you need to express it, find a way to say it positively. So instead of saying, you did such a bad job on this project, for example, or I did such a bad job on this project, say, I will make sure to do better next time. Or I will make sure to do better on the second draft if this is, let's say, a scientific paper or something like that. Or a project. Instead of saying, I am sorry for not having answered you sooner, you can say, thank you for your patience while waiting for me or for waiting, uh, while waiting for my response, and so on. This is not easy. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice. So let's practice a little bit. Or you can take a screenshot and practice later as well. If you don't want to participate, this, uh, this applies to you, Stoyan. Please practice this at home as well. Let's see, instead of saying, I think I am not earning enough for the work that I am doing. Mm, Maria, what could you say? In a positive way, of course, if you would like to share. Um, yes, yes, just a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your time, think about it. Mm. While you think about it, just reminisce about it for a moment, I will just share something that popped into my mind um, about waiting for something. When somebody asks you something that you want to say no to, you can ask for a little bit of time to think about it. Just like Maria now needs a little bit of time to think of a positive way to say this, you can say, for example, the, the person is asking you to stay a little longer at the workplace, but you, for example, have to catch the bus. Uh, you're, you live a little bit further away, or you have a meeting, or you have a birthday party to go to. You can say, can I answer you, or can I give you my reply in five minutes? And then you can check if you are really available to stay longer or no. In that time, while you are thinking about the answer, you can actually think about a more positive way to say what you need to say as well. So feel free to give yourself time before you say yes to something that you might want to say no to. This is really important to remember. Don't rush into answering. Maria, did you think about something? Uh, can I use can I... it? Sure, let's hear in which context. Mm. Could we set up a meeting um, about my raise? Could we set up a meeting about my rates? Still, that's not telling me that you are not satisfied with the amount in a positive way. Hmm. I'm not sure that. It's good, but um, you will need to be a little bit more specific. Let's say... Um, Okay, Natasha, you have to go. Thank you very much for participating. It was a pleasure to have you here with us. All right, so you could say something like, um, I believe that you will agree that the work that I am doing deserves a higher rate. Or I am sure that you acknowledge the hard work that I'm doing and the quality of the service that I'm providing, if that's a service. Um, and I believe that you will agree that I should get a higher salary for this. Now, you can be even more specific if you'd like, but 
if you want you can be less specific and let them say how much if they are going to give you a higher salary does that sound good yes it sounds yes. perfect <laughs> It sounds perfect, but it's not so hard to do. It's not so easy to do it. I understand. That's why I'm saying it takes practice. Let's try another one. Mm. Okay, so another one with a boss not being so respectful towards your free time. Don't expect me to answer your emails immediately out of work hours. Marina, would you like to do this one? How can we say this in a positive way? Sure, let me just see. Uh, don't expect me to answer your emails immediately. Uh, once again, with saying thank you for understanding. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for understanding uh, that my my working. Um, th thank you for respecting my working hours. Um, I would um, answer, I would be more than happy or glad to answer the email uh, during my working hours. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, kind what... of a similar situation. That's right. And I uh, intentionally put it here. <laughs> When it comes to when when it comes to the practice, it is done. But I would like to say one more thing, and that is, when it comes to effective communication, it is very important to be consistent. And I'm not talking just about the tone, the body language, and the expressions that we use, but also what we say and what what kinds of boundaries we set. If, for example, you say that you are not going to answer your emails outside of your work hours, then don't. And simply stick by that. Just basically, don't undermine your words because then nobody's going to be taking you seriously. I had that problem at the beginning of my career. I said, I'm not going to answer emails or, or messages on a Sunday. And then I did. And then I had no day off and I was tired. <laughs> but setting those boundaries and then sticking to them really helped me have a kind of a work-life balance and then of course it helped me be more productive and effective and positive during my working hours so stay consistent to wrap up i would also like to say always try to turn the communication into a positive and be polite be calm realize that you cannot change another person, but maybe you can change his or her mood and you can change your way of communicating, especially when you are aware of the communication skills that are useful in these kinds of situations. Great practice, everybody. Any questions about anything that we talked about? Was there something that you disliked, something that you liked in particular? Nothing. Okay. Well, it was a pleasure to talk with all of you today. Not everybody who signed up came, but I think we had quite a nice discussion with the people who were here and willing to participate and practice. It was really very nice to get to know you all a little bit better and to, I hope, help you a little bit with making your communication a little bit more effective and productive. If you are interested in joining the, uh, the education, so to say, the training that's going to take place on a Saturday, this one in particular, it's going to happen between 11 and 15 o'clock and it's going to be a much more detailed practice. If you would like that, contact me and I will put you into the group. If nobody has anything to add or say or ask, we're done. So, last chance, everybody. Okay, thank you so much you. once more, and I look forward to seeing you at some other webinar or training. Take care, and see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.